This is how to travel. Middle East. So listen, we don't travel for a living. We can't just take six weeks off. And we're not going to quit our jobs to go see the world. We're just regular guys with normal jobs. But we do travel aggressive and travel often. And we're going to show you how you can too. I like the campus, personally. And this thing is awesome. Okay, where are we going this time? We are going to Dubai, and Oman, and Istanbul. So Middle East for me, I think it's kind of a tough nut to crack, right? I mean, like some places you just cannot go to in the Middle East. Yeah, so I think the, the Middle East is pretty intimidating to a lot of people, especially given a lot of the kind of press coverage First time to the Middle East though, um, Dubai is like safest alternative as far as like easiest jumping off point. We found out that just next door, the country of Oman has so much cool stuff. What's cool about Oman too is that you can camp anywhere. So we're basically gonna pack up, get a rental car, check out UAE and Oman while camping the whole way. Both countries are really remarkably safe, not only for the region, but for the world. There's very little you know, issue with crime or violence at all. So let's talk about flights. Without a doubt, the best place to go to get a good deal on a flight is skyscanner.com. What's awesome about Skyscanner is that it has a function that you can search for the cheapest month. That's great. pretty awesome too, I mean, to get a 10 day trip, including Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and Istanbul to boot, right? and we only are taking six days off of work. And in total, the airfare is like 800 some bucks. We'll share more detail on the Istanbul option yeah. in a later video too, so be sure to check that out. I always try to avoid totally using check baggage, especially on a camping trip, because if God forbid there's any issue with your luggage making it all the way to Dubai, you have no tent, you have nothing, you have no hotel reservation, so you're basically screwed, right? So if you can, every single trip, use carry-on luggage. All right. All right, let's go do it. Well, that was a marathon of two back-to-back -back red eye flights. Pretty rough. Gonna go get freshened up real quick. Now we're ready to hit the ground running. So reserving cars online in Dubai was really easy, but we did have to arrange ahead of time to uh, be allowed to take the car to Oman. Okay, great. We'll have all the paperwork set up by budget rental car and it's quick and easy and ready to go. In Dubai, you're actually required to have an international driving permit in addition to your driver's license. Just roll into any AAA or AAA.com and it's about 20 bucks to get one. Well, it actually wasn't as easy peasy as I thought it was gonna be, so apparently the guys at Budget don't have insurance for Oman right now, so they suggest we just go to the border and then buy it there, so hopefully it works out just fine for us. Yo, check out, check out our whip. Nah, just kidding. This place is like kind of weird. What what the hell is this? Where the hell are we? Who is this meant to be for?
So after that cultural experience, we are going to the Louvre. <laughs> Hey, where are we going to? The county fair? Nah, we're going to Louvre. This is kind of a bummer. The other side of that, you know, amazing market, this is where all the tourists are, and it doesn't look cool, there's nothing going on, the prices are more expensive inside, and all you gotta do is just go inside the shops and go to the other side. Prices are almost half off. I still don't think I actually know what dates are. Fruit from a palm tree. Oh. Our souls belong together. Our souls belong together. I feel it. We're at the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi and this thing is awesome. And Rihanna even came here so you know it's legit. So I've been in Gothic cathedrals, Buddhist temples, Mao Zedong's tomb, but I've never been inside of a mosque before. And this was so impressive and so sober. It's really, really amazing. So we're trying to get out of Abu Dhabi to go set up in the desert for the night. And um, we're having a real hard time with navigation. Am I going the right way here? Yeah. Google Maps is not doing a great job pointing us towards grocery stores and gas stations. The grocery store that we found that was actually open, all of their meat was frozen. So we had to go with the canned meat variety for tonight. So um, should be good enough at least to get us down the road. So uh, we just parked on the side of the freeway here out in the dunes and uh, went out and spent the night. Dude wipes. No showers. Wipe these. Well, um, we're we approaching the border to Oman. Yo, definitely be sure to check with your rental car company which borders you'll be allowed to cross. Because for us, it looks like there's only one that we can go over today. Quick checklist. 
registration for the vehicle with a note from the owner that we can take it into a mon. We don't have insurance yet, and we have our passports, and that should be all that we need. Do you know where we can buy insurance there? Not quite. It should be from the border, I think. All right, so far so good. Exiting the UAE, it costs 35 dirhams each. We were sure to get our passports stamped because I think there's an issue if you leave and enter countries if you don't have all your appropriate stamps. I think we're finally in. I think there's actually five different stops we had to make to get across the border. <clears throat> They're really slow through the immigration office. Actually ended up taking us over an hour just to stand in line, get our visas, then get the insurance and get out of there. So do you expect it to take an hour or two to really get through? Jabal Shams. That way. That way. Okay. Just spent the night in Jebel Shams, we went up right to the canyon edge and camped there. One thing to note is that it is a lot colder up there than it is everywhere else in Oman. Who knew that the Middle East would get down to like 40 Fahrenheit, you know? Yeah. Today we're going to Nizwa, which is kind of the second city of Oman. Sound good? Sounds good. Alright, we just left the Nizwa Suk and we picked up a few things. This one's called Alwa. It's a traditional Omani sweet. 
Good. Uh, it's got the soup jelly, but it's just a lot of spices. Also got some dates. These are like awesome, awesome dates, and it costs like a dollar. So what do you think of the halwa? That is good. It's, uh, it's got a lot of spice to it, so don't think we can eat the whole thing. It has like kind of a funk to it too from the butter. So it's good in moderation. Am I going here? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Driving in Dubai is notoriously challenging, but still here we're having a really hard time First of all, because all the signs are in Arabic, they don't list the numbers of the roads or the highways. So it kind of just says, like, in, you know, here, it just says oh, peace key. that was, oh. <laughs> Case in point, right? Oh, God damn it. Now where do I go? Take this one. Let's just take this one. Yeah, Google Maps is really not going to uh, help you out here. Do you know where I'm going here? Straight, just go straight. Take out. the right or the straight? Uh, take the right. And we downloaded the maps beforehand, so it should have worked, and now we want to go that way. It's definitely manageable. You just can't, like, put your phone on the dash and follow it. You're going to have to be proactive about checking out, you know, where the route says to go. Look out, everybody. <laughs> we got an early start to get down to the ocean, which I am looking forward to getting, like, a nice lunch and getting in the ocean. This is the fifth day without a shower, and you need one. We found it to be kind of challenging, surprisingly, to find Omani food. It seems like almost all of the restaurants are either Turkish or Indian or like kind of a Indian Omani fusion. This is like an interesting question. Of, is this the food that Omanis eat? Is that Omani culture? Or is Omani food, traditional food, the Omani culture? Well, we're uh, rolling out of Sur. We didn't actually spend very much time in Sur. We just uh, pretty much rolled into town, checked out a couple restaurants. Honestly, I don't think there's very much at all to say about Sur, right? It's very sleepy. There isn't much going on. It's kind of pretty, and that's about it. at the Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque in Muscat and it is hot out, but we gotta be fully clad to the ankles, to the wrists, to observe all the rules of Islamic Sharia. At least you got your ankles covered. Kinda. I, I might get a little spiced up if you showed me your ankles.
but most of, most of what we're doing in Muscat today is just eating. So we've got a few places picked out. Um, first one, what is that place called? Al, Al Hazni Omani Sweets. Can't, I can't actually say the word. Al Hazni. Al Hazni. Al Hazni. Al Hazni. Al Hazni Omani Sweets. I don't want to say Al Hazni Omani Sweets anymore. Al Hazni Omani Sweets. We're going to we're going to a sweet shop. You're supposed to be able to um, try all sorts of halwa and stuff there. Here uh, in Muscat, eating like locals. Um, a pretty great spot. What's it called? There's a grand chicken and there's the Micarabia chicken. I'm excited, are you? <laughs> Eat Mick local. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -ba. About to make try this Micarabia <laughs> chicken. It's f big, dude. <laughs> Things a tortilla and a half. All right, I'm gonna. Try. I don't care if you're not hungry. I'm gonna keep eating all day. Tastes uh, pretty good. Tastes like um chips. There's like this is a stellar good. review. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Tastes like chips. Okay, next spot, it's called Zanzibar Island Restaurant. Oman actually colonized parts of Africa. So the Zanzibar place is uh, African food Omani place. Okay, Google Maps sent us to Zanzibar Restaurant, which apparently was exactly here before it was knocked down. So we got some uh, local directions and we're trying to go find the new Zanzibar. It seems like there's kind of this just melange of cultures. The African restaurant has like samosa type things, you know, and this isn't very different from the Omani type food that we had yesterday, so it's it seems like it's all kind of one melting pot, right? the why is in the metro suit that there is a kind of lull it's open in the morning and then i guess doesn't open back up until four o'clock so uh whoops got drive by by the perfume guy and like <laughs> smelling fresh still hungry been eating all day but yes uh, last one of the day this one is Benetique 
and it's like the place for Omani food apparently, but we've also heard this is like old school Omani food that maybe no one really eats this anymore, so. <laughs> <laughs> It's got like a little funk to it. It's like a little, a little bit like mutton or like horse. Okay, this one is called Haris. It's like mashed wheat and meat and um... Is there meat in there? Oil. Yeah, there's camel meat in there as well. Oh. Tastes like chicken? Mm. It almost tastes like a thick soup. A thick soup? Yeah, it's good though. It's actually mm. really good. Black tea with essence defeat. Tea bag, two ways. <laughs> we broke on roll last night, showed up really late to the campground. Which is good because he gave us a lot of time to check out all the stuff with Scott that we wanted to see. We camped on the beach. There's a bunch of Omani people and all the Omani people left at some point in the night. It's like about 3 a.m. A car full of guys parked about 50 meters away from our tent and they were trying to check out what we were doing. I just didn't even want to address the situation so I just stayed laying down in the tent. And I figured they probably didn't want to come deal with us. And they didn't do anything and let us sit there. Why is mine so round? Because you didn't put the internet in it. Just, I can't, I can't put the internet out of mine. Back to the peasant, to the falahin bone. Rolling into the first stop of however many unknown stops. Okay, well, we just rolled through that. That was pretty easy. There's a building where we got our visas on the way in. Okay, whoopsie number one. Oman doesn't stop you on the way out, but apparently you need to get stopped to get your passport stamped. To get back into UAE. So, so we, we got turned around, sent back to Oman, because we're know. basically in no man's land. So we just got through the second checkpoint, now we're pulling into the visa building where we got our visas originally. So we just got out of the visa building for Oman. So we just went up to the place where we got our visas originally and just said that we needed an exit stamp and that we're going to Dubai. He stamped it immediately. It took literally about a minute. I think we can just go in now. All we did was get a stamp from the folks inside the building in UAE and then, oh shit, now there's another thing. Just got absolutely reamed at the checkpoint. I forgot about some sick pills I left in my uh, backpack. Medications, red flag. If you got pill bottles, red flag. In total, make sure you get your passport stamped on the way out of Oman, because they may not do it. Just stop in the beast building and make them do it. I like the camels, personally. Most people don't even know what Oman is. Gas was like basically free. Food was dirt cheap. Kind of expensive for housing. This thing is free. <laughs> Visas and entry exit fees were kind of expensive, not a big deal, you gotta do it. Rental car was reasonable. There's an upcharge to go to Oman, but I'd say it's worth it. Especially if you're looking at the cost of what Oman is gonna cost you to go any other way. The yep. rental car is far and beyond the cheapest way. I'm looking forward to actually being in it in Dubai. 